Okie dokie. Um, I think we'll make a start. Um, if anybody drops in, then too bad. Um, so my name's Pavis. I am. Uh, I founded Vader Consulting back in the UK. So you're going to have to deal with my English accent for the next 40 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to present today, I don't know if anyone saw the um, saw any of the sessions for Civicon London this year. Um, so I'll be effectively presenting a similar presentation to that um, with the addition of um, recurring activities on the end of it uh, because since then we've, we've actually done recurring activities as well. Um, so the original authors of this presentation were Priyanka and Deepak who, who are the two lead devs from our side um, who did all the work for recurring events. Um, and We've got Zing and Woodlands Church logos up there because Zing were the fun ones who actually funded the work, um, so they sponsored the work. Um, Woodland, Woodlands Church was Lindsay Mansfield, who originally uh, presented the idea of doing recurring events in Civi uh, and had spent quite a lot of time and energy over years trying to make it happen. Um, so, so just to give you a bit of background, um, as I mentioned, Lindsay Mansfield from Woodlands Church created a wiki back in 2011 um, explaining how it might be useful to have recurring events available in Civi CRM. Um, and at the start of her presentation, she asked an inter interesting question, which was um, sort of if everyone took a minute and said, I wish Civi CRM could, um, how, many, how many people wouldn't have something that they wish Civi could do? Probably we're going to find that everybody has something that they wish Civi could do that it doesn't at the moment. Um, what she did was she actually documented that. So she took that stage further. She didn't just keep it as an idea in her head. She created a wiki page. She put her idea up so that it was visible to the world um, and, and carried on pursuing it. So if you look further down the, uh, the timeline, you'll see that it's a, it was actually in 2014 that Zing picked it up. So for three years, she, she just sat on the idea, carried on talking to people until the right person heard uh, and, th and then it materialized. So you know, one of the biggest kind of lessons from this process for me, even though I, I didn't do this, I didn't create the wiki or anything, is if you want something done, then, then don't give up on it and, and get it out onto the wiki, get it out into the world. Otherwise, your knights in shining armor are just not going to know about it and can't help you. Um, so um, <coughs> the key requirements she identified, um, she wanted session-based. Um, courses. So, for instance, um, they run the alpha course for people who are interested in religion, uh, and that runs over a certain number of weekends, uh, and you can come to all or one or two or as many sessions as you want, and you kind of decide what you're going to come to. Um, they have uh, slightly different uh, recurring events, which are actual recurring events, which happen every week regardless, which are the Sunday morning toddler groups. Um, and they have about 300 children who come to these groups. Um, so they're, they're a much more kind of streamlined. This is what we do every Sunday, 10 o'clock. You know, we need, we need staff, we need the room, uh, we need materials. Uh, and they, need to, they wanted to see the trend. So are these groups growing? Are they decreasing? Are people who said they're going to come actually bringing their children or not? Um, so they need to start monitoring some of that stuff. Um, and they're, they're the key thing. So the, the way they were managing it before meant that sometimes the events were in Civi, sometimes they weren't. Sometimes it was pieces of paper with ticks on it. Sometimes it was a spreadsheet. So to, to kind of make it easier to manage in Civi, the whole creation process, um, being able to see the linked events, being able to get data out for the linked events was, was the kind of key to it. So Lindsay did try and make it happen. I think back in 2012, she created a Make It Happen project for, for it as well. Um, under Lobo's advice, his, his advice was that if you don't have sort of 40 or 50% of the funding, it's very unlikely, unlikely that your make it happen is going gonna, is gonna to reach fruition. Um, and as is normally the way, Lobo was right. <laughs> the make it happen didn't really get off the ground and it, and it, it didn't reach anywhere near fruition. Um, so uh, Lindsay kind of sat on it for a while uh, and then Zing picked it up in 2014. Um, they came straight to us, uh, had a chat with us about it. Um, and we were quite happy to do it because we had a user, we had somebody willing to fund it. So we kind of had all the right pieces to make sure that the piece of work went in 
how it should go in and was a usable piece of work. Um, the work actually went into core in 4.6, um, so we launched it at Civicon in September, London, uh, and submitted it to core, and Coleman, who's standing at the back there, did the last couple of days of work on it for 4.6, right? <laughs> very kindly. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, again, my advice is never get up. Sometimes trying to get stuff into core um, can be can hurt your ego, but you have to kind of swallow it and get on with get on with whatever you need to do. So, uh, it's the only way to benefit the community, really. So, um, off of the recurring events thing, it, it quite quickly became apparent to us that Lobo's thinking and the thinking of the core was was a bit more around recurring entities than it was just recurring events. Um, there's a lot of different places in Civi where a recursion would be useful. Um, so for, our, for Woodlands Church, it was the events um, and being able to recur an event. But um, for workflow for Civi Core, it was more around activities and being able to recur an activity. So I don't necessarily want to manage meetings. I don't want to say, here's a meeting, and these are all the people that are coming and create it and as an event and manage it that way. I might just want to do that as an activity to say, right, there's a meeting every Friday, these are all the employees, they all come, and it's every Friday at so-and-so time. And that could just as easily be an activity. And I can then use scheduled reminders, I can use any of the kind of functionality around that to, um, to manage, those, manage those things. Um, the other part of it is there are other systems. So there's Civi Volunteer, there's Civi Booking, that also really could do with the recurring. So I might want to book a room, but I want to book it uh, every week um, for the next six months. Um, at the same time, same time. So, the engine that we needed to build technically needed to take all this into account. But there were other other modules in Civi that probably needed to use this, whatever we did. Um, Lobo did put a blog post up. I think that was in 2013. I'm not sure exactly when it was, or 2012, um, about roughly how he thought that should work. Um, and the way he'd written it, it just meant that the work, if we did it that way, then it would get the maximum return on the effort that we put in. If we concentrated purely on the event side, we might have got a bit more functionality, but it would have just been for events and none of the other components in Civi would have really been able to leverage it at all. Um, so we went down the same route that kind of Lobo had planned out. Um, we released the wiki for the recurring events page. Again, that's a kind of interesting stage of the project when you get to that point. You, you, you often push the wiki out and then it opens up heaven's doors, if you like. Um, everybody will start coming up with all sorts of things on there. And you really have to kind of, you, you have to make sure your wiki is um, at least 90% there, i.e. you're kind of quite strong about the core processes that you're trying, to, you're trying to get across. Otherwise, it's very easy to get sidetracked. And obviously, when people are looking at the wiki, they don't know the budgetary constraints. They don't know what it is that you as a developer have signed up for. Um, so sometimes, the uh, request, although it's perfectly valid, it, you can't, there's no way you can fit it into your cycle. So there were a lot of things we had to kind of turn away or put into phase two or future, future work, um, which I'll talk about at the end of the presentation. But the core, the key thing for us was to get the recurring engine in and to make sure that events themselves could recur. Um, so um, we also did that and then, like I say, we, we also plugged in recurring activities. Uh, so typical kind of examples, um, you've got a training course for employees or you've got um, something that runs every month. Uh, it runs on the first Monday of every month, the last Friday of every month. It's running for six months, but there are one or two dates where you're not running it. They're the kind of examples that people were, were throwing at us of the sort of thing that they wanted to do. Um, so. So if I just dart over. So I've got um, a CVCR in 4.6, just running standard demo data. Um, and just going to events, manage events. Um, what you'll notice for those who came from 4.5 or have been looking, looking at older, older versions of Civi, you'll now see this kind of recurring event parent thing there. Uh, let me just make my screen a bit bigger. So there's an extra bit of information that you see here if it's a recurring event. So what I'll do is just to show you how this works, I'm going to create a new event. <coughs> um, and let's do paid conference. So 
So I've created my, uh, I'm going to create my uh, base event. So this is effectively the event that I want to repeat. So what we now see in uh, CV4.6 is a repeat tab, um, which wouldn't have been there before in prior versions. And if there's anyone's got any questions, just shout them out. Don't wait till the end. Um, so if I click on the repeat tab, um, what this now does is gives me some options. So first thing is, when do I want my repeating record to start? So when should, when should the first occurrence of my repeat be? So I can push that forward and say, actually, I want you to start it on Friday, the 1st of May. Um, what time? So it's going to default to the same time as what, what I created the main event. But I could change that and make that, I'll say it's actually 7 PM I want you to start. Um, and then it's the recursion itself. So here I've got week. Um, and I can choose a particular day in the week that if I wanted to keep it to that day, then when we work out the schedule, that's the day that will hit when we work out the recurring. Or if I was to change that to a month, then my schedule ch slightly changes. So I could say, right, do I want that on the first day of every month or the last day of every month or the which, whichever day, whichever date of the month it wants um, or a particular day. So do I want that on the first Sunday of every month? So a lot of um, small kind of charities or uh, community groups often run the last Sunday of every month. They'll run a, a particular day. Um, so uh, I'm going to go back. Let's go back and do this weekly. And I'll do so. Uh, and then we've got how many occurrences do I want of this? So there was a talk on the wiki about having an infinite recurring event. Um, for phase one, we kind of dropped that idea because it has its own set of compl complications. It means fundamentally how you generate those events needs to be thought about. So at the moment, when I do this and I say I want 10 occurrence of this, Sibi is actually going to create 10 events that are all linked to each other um, with the relevant online pages and sign-up pages and registration things that are needed. Um, if we were going to go down the infinite loop, then we couldn't really do that. We'd have to, we'd have, to have some way to generate these events as and when we think they should, that window opens for them. So that's a phase two thing. Phase two thing. So at the moment in Civi Core, that's not there. Um, so I can either end it after 10 occurrences, or I can say, I want to stop this in, uh, at the end of, July, end of August is the, last, is the last time it should run. So then Civi will work out how many occurrences um, that's going to be. And I can exclude some dates. Right? So I could say, well, actually, I know for sure that Friday is a bank holiday, so we're not, or a public holiday, whatever you call it in the US. Um, so we're not, we're, not, we're not having it that day. Um, so I can, exclude, I can exclude certain dates. Now again, in the wiki, one of the requests that came up was being able to add in additional dates. So for instance, that Friday is, is a public holiday, but um, I might say, well, in that case, I'm gonna do it on the Thursday. So at the moment in the current um, setup, you can't do that. Um, and again, it's a thing for phase two. It wouldn't be too difficult to add that functionality into it to add an extra date in. Um, but like I say, we couldn't, we couldn't accommodate that in the first release. Okay, doke. So if I just save that now. So what, what the system's now telling me is this is what it thinks it's going to do. So this is my chance to look at it and go, oh, I've totally got this wrong. It should have been monthly, not weekly. Whatever mistake I was going to make, now's the time to catch it. So, um, so this is what it's going to generate. It's going to generate 13 events for me um, with, with, these, with these kind of event IDs, if you like. So I can just hit continue on that. So off it goes, it's done that now. So it's created all those events. And again, under the repeat tab, what you'll see is um, all of those events created for you. Yeah, uh, with the correct date and time. And it would have inherited all the details from the master event. So if there's online registration, these will all have online registration. If there were profiles, these were the profile, the, those profiles will carry forward to, to these events. Yep. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you can. So w what we can do is if we look at one of these events, we can go into the settings record for that event and say, actually, um, let's say the location of this one. We didn't know before, but we can go into this one. And I'll just pick, an, pick an one because I want to type one out. And I can save that. Now, Civi knows at this point that's a recurring event. So I've picked up a child. So I've got an option. So what do I want to do next? Um, 
and this applies to any of the um, any of the settings on the event. As soon as I change them, I'll get prompted. Um, so I can say only for this event. So in this case, it's not going to touch the recurring. It's not going to try and it's not going to try and regenerate the uh, schedule at all because it doesn't need to. Um, you could do the same for the date. Yep. So I could I could move that date and say. Um, Actually, this event isn't happening on that day. It's happening on the Thursday. Yeah, exactly. In Civi, they're individual events, but we know about the fact that they're connected. We know what the parent and the child is. Um, so again, I can do that and, and make that the only one that has that. Yeah. So that's you know the way to get around the whole <coughs> how to move stuff around. Um, Yeah, so yeah, so pretty much like, so I don't know how familiar everybody is with events. I probably should have asked that question at the beginning. Um, how many people are, are familiar or are using events at the moment in Civi? Pretty much everyone, right, cool, easy. So um, yeah, so in the fees section, I can just come in and, and change the fees for this. Uh, and I could, uh, I could add a price set to then have meal options and whatever else I wanted for that event. Um, and then those, and again, I'll get prompted for the same question. Do I want it? Only for this event, or, or for all of them? Yeah. Well, basically, at the moment, this is almost like a template, templated event. Plus, you have the umbrella term and the first term event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the idea is, because um, some some of the trains of thoughts were, well, why don't why isn't it session based properly? Session based. So, yeah, okay, it's one event, but it's split across seven seven months of one day events. So that's a slightly different uh, concept, but you can fulfill it in exactly the same way. Um, it's just the booking process is different. So how do you sign up for that event becomes different. Um, so again, it's a phase two thing of if I sign up for the parent, allowing them to sign up for all the children at the same time. So being able to say, yeah, I'm coming to this event and these are the days that I'm coming. So then they get the individual participant records for those particular, those particular events. That's a phase two thing. Um, when we started to get into that, it's quite a complex thing to do because <laughs> um, they can all have different payment options. They could have different options in their own rights, different profiles. It can really get messy. So, um. so if I put in all Zoom recordings, so if I put all the override, I can have an override. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. So when we looked at how to, to build this and the UI and stuff. Uh, that's what we looked at. We looked at Outlook and um, went went along those lines. So if I if I do that and save again. So if, if we just go through these options. So only this event obviously doesn't touch the schedule at all. So it won't try and reproduce the schedule. We'll just say I'm going to just edit and update this event. Um, this event onwards effectively touches the schedule. So it's going to look <coughs> at what to do next. Um, if there is an impact on on dates, times, then it will it will impact going forward. Um, and the way that Civi does this, the, say, the way that this recurring does this at the moment is to remove any events that don't have participants and recreate them with whatever I've got in my settings now. So it is a it's a it's a replace rather than a update. If they, have participants, if they have participants, then they're dislocated from the recurring, and a new recurring one is set up. So if, for instance, you've moved the date of a record uh, of one of the future events and someone's already registered for the old date, you'd contact them and say, we've moved it. If you want to move to the new one, we'll, you, this is where you can register for the new one. And effectively, you'd archive the old event away. Um, but it wouldn't be linked to the repeating anymore. It would be effectively a standalone event. Uh, so that's going forward. And the final option is obviously all the events. So going back to the parent and all the children make this change. Um, so if I do that, oh, I haven't put any fees in. Right, so let's do that now. So we'll um, 
So if we register a participant for this one, um, let's pick someone. Okay, so I've got him against one of the events. So if I So if I go back to the recurring, if I now I'm just gonna go to I'll go to that one. So if I change location now, for instance. And I hit save. Um, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'll say, right, do this for every event. So now what will happen is. Shouldn't have done that. Let's try that again. <laughs> Actually, I think it's only if, the rep if, the rec if it needs to recreate because I've changed this. So let's change, let's change the time. Right. So that change, the change to the location isn't really going to impact the schedule, but now this change is impacting the schedule. So now I'm getting a warning saying, right, okay, I can do everything, but this event has got a participant, so I'm not going to touch it. So I'm not going to remove it and recreate it, and I'm not moving the participant, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. So you've got the option now to back out of the change and say, well, let me, let me move this person first, or let me rename this event or do something with it, and then come back and, and, and make the change. No, so, um, so that's the, you just do that. But what we have done um, is is in the advanced search now, you can um, you can find anybody who's registered for any of the uh, recurring events. So if I um, so if I come down here, and this time I pick um, so I pick one of the Denver recurring. I now get this extra checkbox that says, do I want anybody from any of these recurrings? Because I've changed location, so I need to tell everyone. I don't want to just tell that one set. So that will then bring back all participants to all of those, and I can communicate with them. I'm assuming you create a smart person that search based on that, so people come in later and you can email them. Or right, exactly. Yep. So you, all the functionality of, of advanced search is there for you to use. Clean up as in? Well, if you had participants attached to events, oh, right, yeah. the recurring, they're now, they're, now, they're not orphans insofar as they're yeah. attached to events, but they're not attached to the events they should be attached right. to. Right. I mean, you can. So this way, if you search them, because mm -hmm. um, what you could do is search, get them first, and say, right, I'm going to put them into a smart group, <laughs> make your change, and then attach them to the correct okay. event. You, you could do it that way. Okay. So at the moment, we're not, we're not kind of trying to automate that because... We don't know the impact of the change. Right. So if it's, if it's a date change, do you want to tell everyone? And what is it you're telling them? Why have you changed it? Right. What's the reason? So we're kind of leaving that to, to you as a business process okay. to, to deal with. Um, OK. Um, let me see what else I've got. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the advanced search um, deals with that. And that can be quite handy if, if you're doing stats. So if you want to see. Um, okay, give me everybody who, if you did a course for five weeks and you want to say, right, everybody who came to every single week, I'm going to send them a certificate or an email that says thank you very much for coming and stuff like that. You can kind of do all those searches and get, get those people out. Um, and you can, in the same way, you might find people that have only attended one session, not others, right? You do exactly the same, same kind of thing. <coughs> okay, so that's recurring events. So once we kind of kind of done that. Um, in terms of the registration pages, no different. They all, it's the standard kind of sign up forms. They're all individual events in their own rights. So you can have different descriptions, different profiles, different amounts, whatever you want on, on any of them. Um, so the other part of the work was to do uh, the activities, right? So if I bring up someone, let's get a contact. 
So again, in pre 4.6, uh, if you create a new activity, so let's say I have a meeting activity, uh, in pre 4.6, you wouldn't have this repeat tab, right? Uh, the repeat accordion. Uh, and again, it's exactly the same as the, um, the re recurring events one in terms of the options and what it will do. Um, so I can add more people to it. So I like Smiths because um, they're easy to find. So we could say, for instance, all of these people. Um, and we have a work group. And again, we're doing it every Friday. Uh, that's fine. I can make it scheduled if I want, just so that I can keep a track of what, which ones we've done and which ones we haven't. Uh, and I'll make that every week on the Friday for 28 weeks. Okay, and I've got the same options in terms of exclusions. So I can just save that. Again, it's warning me. This is what I'm about to create. Are you sure? Yep. That all looks good to me. It's done. So now I'm seeing all the uh, recurring activities come on that contacts record and all going into the future. So what I can do now is just say, right, this one was, we had this one, everybody came, make it complete and just manage it that way. Is, is the default, is that just for the parent or does that have any relation to any of the child activities? Yeah. I knew that question was gonna come up. I don't actually know, to be honest, I think. <laughs> I think it does. I think, it, I think it's a clone. Every activity is a clone of, of the parent. So if you had a, a, a schedule follow-up for the first, then it will try and create the second and third. Um, but it will change the custom data? Yeah, custom data is carried, yep. Um, so yeah, so I can view any of these, and again, it will show me who, and it's the same set of contacts. So I'll see it both sides, so if I go to Go to carers, I'll see her 29 activities on her as well. And then I can do things like using the schedule reminders so that they get a reminder for that meeting two days before every time. So I, you know, it takes a lot of the workflow kind of processes that you'd normally have to sort of say, oh, okay, yeah, we've got this on Friday, it's Wednesday, I need to send it, set it up, send the emails, make sure people are coming, confirmed. You can kind of take that all away. So using this, you could then automate an email that says, here's a here's a link, click this link and confirm you're coming and kind of take the whole process away. So they're kind of self-managing it. Um, so that's recurring activities. Uh, and then just to, to, this was a slide that Priyanka did. I never really understood it. So I'm just gonna go straight past it, <laughs> forget that. <laughs> uh, so the technical implementation for the techies amongst us, there's a table called uh, recurring entity, which which can be uh, used for any, any, anything within CVCRM. Uh, so we, examples in there were um, like the custom data for events goes into this recurring. Um, any, any of the price set fields go into the recurring. So then you can change an individual one without impacting anything because the recurring record holds the master set and what the definition is. Um, so the use for tells us what, what component it's for in Civi. So whether it's an activity or whether it's a contribution or whatever it is. Um, and we use the when library. So there's a, 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 a kind of planning library around the schedules and stuff uh, built in PHP that lets you, it kind of takes the headache away of how to schedule this every Friday stuff. It just kind of does it for you. Um, the core was, was put into 4.6. So here for instance, I, is some examples of the recurring bits. So we've got the telephone sections that are recurring for those, the PCP blocks. So if you've allowed personal campaign pages, again, they're recurring. So all the different elements are in the recurring. Um, and it's all kind of, it's very easy to create your own. So here's some example code of, if you wanted to recur something, this is how you could do it. Um, and whether you built that as an extension or pushed it back to core is entirely up to you. Uh, so, you know, an example that I come across quite a lot is um, different campaigns for different uh, kind of giving pages that people want to create and they want to they want to have like a cake bake Friday. So, you know, you could you could just self generate a contribution page to fire up every Friday that kind of has that Friday's campaign in it and people could, could
could register for that and do that, and you wouldn't need to manually go and create all those contribution pages. Um, so some of the phase two plans, so I think somebody asked earlier the registration screens, so being able to register for all events in one hit, uh, it's a complicated one, and whether that goes phase two or phase X, I can't guarantee at the moment, um, because you've got things like the amount and the price sets and everything else that follows, so you could just do, yeah, let them pick all events uh, and then skip the pricing section for later on, uh, you know, there's a few ways around it. Um, with the finding participants to get a bit more detail in it. So at the moment, it's find it for all recurrence, recurs or not. Um, we could have a bit more in there that says find it for any recurring onwards of this date, before that date. You know, you could kind of kind of get a bit more into it. <coughs> um, and then there's a couple of reports that would be good. So in order to monitor how these events are going, um, whether you're getting more or less people, uh, it'd be good to have some reports that actually showed you that visually. Um, for Woodlands Church, they kind of built their own thing. They've got a developer in-house who built some dashboards that show them this stuff. But to, to bring them into core would be, again, a phase two thing that we'd look at. Um, there's some references to the wiki page, some test cases. So if you wanted to have a look and feed back onto the wiki, obviously it's still open, so you can feed back onto it if you've got more phase two ideas. Uh, what we'll do is the next round of dev will go back to Zing and some other funders and say, look, this is what we think, this is the sort of traction this has now got. Um, how about some more money and some more dev, effectively. Um, cool, so that's the end of my presentation. If there are any questions or you wanna talk, just ask them now or you can grab me at any time in the day. Cool, thank you.